15 of these amazing mutual animal relationships. Hey, let's give a shout out to Lewis Vallier Jr. Letting us know he's enjoying his time with Epic Wildlife and giving us a recommendation. We do appreciate that, Lewis. By all means, if you like the content, be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Cheers. Termites and protozoa. Now, humans might hate termites because of the insect's habit of chewing up our homes, but did you know termites are actually beneficial to the health of the planet? They serve a vital role in reducing and recycling falling and decaying wood. Helping them with this vital service is a group of intestinal symbionts called protozoa. The protozoa enables termites to digest wood fragments, including cellulose, while benefiting from the insect's appetite for wood. Without the protozoa active in its gut, the termite would starve to death because it could not digest its food. Honey badgers and honey guide birds. Now, both animals love honey, hence the name. But the bird will lead other predators like the honey badger or ratel to honeybee nests and allow them to attack and feed off the colony. And once they're done, the crafty bird will swoop in and gather up the remaining spoils. It's a win-win all around. In addition to honey badgers, the birds are also known to lead humans to find bee nests. And we should mention that some sources have labeled the relationship between the honey badger and the honey guide bird to be a myth. But in any event, do you really think that the honey badger would care. Leaf hoppers and meat ants. Meat ants usually feed on dead animals and are known to be territorial and vicious creatures. They even force other species of ants to stay clear of them and to do their foraging at night. But these ants are known to make certain exceptions for creatures that secrete substances upon which they can feed. Enter the leaf hopper, which secretes a sugary resin used for breaking down plants. The ants use the resin to preserve the food and also as a ready food source. In return, ants protect the leaf hoppers from predators. Egrets and everything. Now you might notice how birds seem to know what it takes to get along with the fellow members of the animal kingdom. And here's another example. Egrets are known to hop aboard the backs of all sorts of larger mammals, including elephants and hippos. They help the brethren out by picking out parasites from fur or skin, which nourishes the bird while also relieving the other animal of that burden. And because egrets are thought to be more sensitive to the surroundings than their compatriots, they make for a good early warning system whenever environmental predators or other dangers appear. Zebras and oxpeckers. Oxpeckers are small birds known for perching atop big animals like zebras, impalas, hippos, and rhinos. Like egrets, oxpeckers will clean out the ticks, small insects, and other parasites from the larger animal. These birds are suspected of having something of a mean streak, however. They're thought to occasionally open wounds on the backs of zebras, encouraging more parasites to embed themselves for later meals. Now, on the plus side, oxpeckers are known for their flying scream whenever predators approach, and interestingly, that works best to these zebras zebra's advantage. It is more susceptible to predators than other large mammals. Treants and woodpeckers. It's strange to see these animals helping out one another considering they're actually mortal enemies, well, most of the time anyway, but a kind of truce is made when the rufous woodpecker lays its eggs in the nest of black treants. The ants protect the eggs from predators while the woodpecker protects the ants from other birds. No one knows precisely how this non-aggression pact is hammered out. Evidently though, both sides have some skilled negotiators. Ostriches and zebras. Certainly not two animals you'd expect as best friends, but the unlikely pair is often seen grazing together and helping one another out. The zebra has poor eyesight, and the ostrich has a poor sense of hearing and smell. Because the zebra can hear or smell danger approaching, and the ostrich can see potential predators, both can warn one another instantly, allowing them to flee the area if necessary. Bees and flowers. An example plenty of us are likely familiar with, bees gather nectar as they fly from flower to flower and turn the nectar into food which benefits the bee. As they gather pollen on the bodies, the bees distribute it to flowers they subsequently land upon. As the bees are fed, the flowering plants are able to reproduce. Sea anemones and hermit crabs. Hitching a ride on the crab shell, the sea anemone feeds off of leftovers of the crab's food. In return for the meal, the sea anemone protects the hermit crab by warding off predators like octopi. The crabs actually seek out sea anemones for those protective services. 
spider crabs and algae. Living in shallow regions of the ocean floor, spider crabs are known to have brownish-green algae living on the backs. That gives the crab some camouflage, as the algae helps it blend in with its surroundings and become less noticeable to predators. Meanwhile, the algae gets a nice place to call home. Mole salamanders and Oophila. Oophila is a species of single-celled green algae. Latin's specific name translates to loves salamander eggs. That should give you an idea of where this is headed. Oophila occurs nowhere else in nature than in the eggs of the spotted salamander, growing within the animal's egg capsule after colonizing the animal's egg mass. Upon making itself at home, the algae takes advantage of the carbon dioxide and ammonia produced by the embryos, metabolizing it to produce oxygen through a process of photosynthesis. Research has shown that eggs with this algae tend to hatch more quickly and have a higher rate of survival than those without the algae. And if embryos are removed from the egg mass, algae growth slows down markedly. It's an unlikely symbiotic relationship, but one that seems to benefit both parties. Humans and Intestinal Bacteria Normal flora is a term used to describe a mixture of organisms found at any anatomical site. In the human body, bacteria comprise the most numerous microbial components of normal flora. Most activities of normal flora are beneficial to the host, and that's the case in the relationship between humans and certain bacteria found in the intestines. Sometimes referred to as gut flora, it contains the largest numbers of bacteria compared to other parts of the body. Varieties of gut flora can serve to stimulate development and activity in the immune system and protect against infections spread by pathogenic microbes in addition to certain digestive and nutritional benefits. In return, the gut flora receives protection, a means of support, and a steady supply of nutrients. Seems like everyone wins in that scenario. Guess you could call that a gut feeling. Crocs and plovers. Now, if you see a crocodile open its mouth and a bird flies right in there, you must figure that bird has a death wish. But the plover, a small waiting bird, is actually on a mission. Like a patient in the dentist's chair, the croc stays perfectly still as the plover picks out meat from the bigger animal's mouth. The process serves not only to clean the croc's teeth, but it also prevents infection there. And the plover scores a meal from the whole deal as well, albeit kind of a scary one. Did you know that the plover is also called the crocodile bird? Now you know why. Gray wolves and striped hyenas. Wolves are known to be social animals, but will rarely accept outside species into the packs. Striped hyenas are noted for their often solitary nature when it comes to hunting. So when evidence was found indicating these two species had formed an unlikely alliance, that surprised researchers in the Middle East. Experts initially found hyena and wolf tracks mixed together in Israel's Negev Desert, and later witnessed the two species traveling in a single pack with the hyenas in the middle. The alliance may have been formed in response to the animal's harsh environment where food is extremely scarce. Wolves are faster, more agile, and better hunters in packs than are hyenas. While hyenas do have a keener sense of smell and can break larger bones and break through tin cans found in garbage, experts say interspecies cooperative hunting is rare, but the flexible behavior can occur should each species' survival be at stake. So, we've focused on symbiotic relationships that are mutually beneficial to both species involved, but like we said, there are two other forms of symbiosis. So, we thought we'd give you an example of each before getting to our number one relationship. A commensalism relationship involves our previously mentioned birds, the egrets. But this species is known as the cattle egret because they forage in the fields with cattle and other livestock. Now, those animals stir up insects that the birds can eat. That's a big benefit to the egrets, but provides provides no real advantage to the livestock. And you're likely already familiar with this parasitic relationship. It occurs between mosquitoes and humans. The insects feed off of a blood to survive and to help care for their eggs. Now in return, the mosquito can transmit diseases like malaria or yellow fever to us. Now while the mosquito obviously benefits from this relationship, we humans can pay a steep price for being such accommodating hosts.
gaiters, and wading beds. We told you about the special relationship between crocodiles and plovers. Well, not to be outdone, alligators have formed their own alliance with some birds. Experts say that the gators have worked out an arrangement with certain birds that is a win-win for both animals. As a way to keep their eggs from being preyed upon by mammals like possums, certain species of wading birds will build the nests above waters inhabited by alligators. And while the reptiles offer a measure of protection for the birds, the reptiles gain an advantage as well. Predators entering the territory, seeking the bird's nest, instead become prey for the gators. Scientists from the University of Florida conducted research in the Everglades and found that egrets and herons comprised the two bird families that were most likely to build nests over the alligators. It turned out that the gators with nests over their heads were in much better physical shape than those without a nest nearby. And that's the benefit of getting such easy meals in exchange for serving as the bird's bodyguards. In fact, experts say it's possible the gators might have territorial battles with each other over areas that contain nesting bird colonies. How about that?